Step ahead of me, baby doll. Well, welcome, church. I hope you're having a, a big and merry Christmas Eve. Everybody ready for Christmas? That'll be here in just a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Always ready for Jesus. Amen. Ready, ready or not, here it comes. Uh, so I want to welcome you on behalf of Horseshoe First Baptist Church. Uh, see a few visitors. Uh, thank you for being here. Hope you enjoy our candlelight time together and uh, we we do have the lights dim and off uh, the restrooms down the hallway first two doors on the left if you need those um and otherwise in the way of housekeeping i did want to make this announcement at least for our um, our home folks here so uh, amid covid and positive tests and those sort of things which uh, we have had some we've had three positive tests within the church and they were removed when they were exposed and they didn't get it here, and they know where they got it, and I'm thankful that they saw fit to uh, self-quarantine. And so, uh, just to be a little bit safe, uh, we don't want to be careless or reckless, uh, starting this Sunday and for the next three weeks, no Sunday school and no choir. We feel like we have enough room in here to continue to spread out, and our midweek service downstairs, we feel like we have enough room to continue to gather midweek, have Bible study, prayer, and, and have enough room to spread out. Uh, but we do want to pause a little bit, uh, pushing our kids in a small room with a couple of adults or putting a bunch of adults in a small room um, with a lot of breathing and that sort of thing. So we just want to be safe. Uh, so if you'll cooperate with us for the next three weeks, no Sunday school, no choir. We'll still have in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 11. If you feel comfortable, if you feel safe, uh, we'd love to have you here. We're going to sing a couple of congregation songs, stream the sermon, and uh, if you feel cautious about coming or unsafe being here, uh, then you stay home and stream it. And so that's been our policy since March. Um, if you feel safe, you come, the doors will be open. If you're apprehensive or very cautious, uh, you stay home. Uh, if you want to wear a mask and come, that's cool. If you want to come and not wear a mask, that's cool. We just ask that you scatter out. And uh, we're being safe. We're not passing plates. We're not sneezing and coughing on each other. And we're trying to practice common sense here, uh, but we also know what's going on. So I don't want to dampen the mood or uh, throw COVID in on your Christmas, but Merry Christmas. Uh, so that'll be our operating policy and kind of our rhythm for the next three weeks. And uh, we're excited that you're here. If you're excited to be here, say amen. 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 All right, let me pray. And then we're going to do the Lord's Supper on the front end of our candlelight service. Um, and then we'll proceed with our singing and lighting of candles. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for sending Jesus. Uh, Lord, the reason for the season. And as cliche and as worn out as that saying is, it's absolutely 100% true. Um, Lord, it's hard to not celebrate you coming down to us. Uh, there's no way we can not celebrate you sending your son, Jesus. Lord, we, we say thank you tonight. And we gather here corporately saying, uh, we want to rejoice and celebrate the fact that you came down to helpless man. A righteous God who demands holiness came down to a sin-wrecked world with sinful men and said, I will be your sacrifice. I will pay your bill. I will cover your pardon. And so, Lord, we thank you for coming, dwelling with us. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to empower us so that we can live in crazy times like we're in right now. Thank you for the encouragement that you give us from your word. Thank you, Lord, for the uh, saints, Lord, who will gather we are uplifted. We are encouraged. Lord, we don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We want to do that safely. We want you to bless our efforts and ask you to protect us. And Lord, that you continue to speak into our hearts and our minds as we gather and as we worship and as we sing and as we pray and as we preach. So Lord, I pray tonight we would be reminded of just how important it is that Jesus came, that he died, 
that he rose, and that he's coming back. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to read from Paul's letter um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and everyone should have received a, a pre-filled and sealed um, communion cup with a wafer on top. And while I'm reading, if you want to go ahead and take that top layer off and have your wafer in hand and be ready to uh, take your juice and your wafer, I'm going to read from the text, and we'll have someone pray, and then we'll partake in the Lord's Supper. So here is what Paul says. He says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself or, or reflect in himself or consider himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So uh, what's going on here, specifically that Paul is addressing, is not just a vertical examination of your relationship with God, but also this horizontal examination of your relationship with your fellow man. And uh, Paul is being pretty stern here saying, hey, when you come to the table to partake of the Lord's Supper, Make sure you have that, that vertical relationship right, your relationship with God, and make sure you have that relationship with your fellow man. So before we partake, I do want to give you just a, a minute to examine your heart and your life and that you could um, examine your relationship vertically and horizontally. And so while you do that and while you prepare your elements for the Lord's Supper, Clay, if you don't mind, if you would just lead us in a prayer and upon his completion, then we'll lead you through partaking of the juice and the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you first and foremost for Jesus and as we come together to remember the sacrifice where he gave his body um, for us and his blood for us in order that we might have a home with you one day. Uh, we are overwhelmed with sorrow for him and, but joy for us. And as we celebrate and commemorate this time, we ask that uh, each one of us would... <coughs> take the opportunity to not only look at our relationship to you and to try to grow stronger in our relationship to you, but also our relationship with others. We, you're the center of the wheel. You're the center of the hub. And the closer we are to you, the closer we are to other people. And when we get further away from you, the folks get further apart. And we get further apart from other people too. So help us try to keep you the center of our lives. Amen. And Paul says, For I receive from the Lord that which I also have delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this as my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. pay attention to what Paul says here as I'll review verse 26. He says, for as often as you eat this bread, which we did, and drink this cup, which we did, you proclaim the Lord's death. But he didn't stop there. Until he comes. So we're going to remember what Jesus has done with the thought in mind and with Jesus in the forefront that he is coming back. He's not left us here by ourselves. He's not left us as orphans. He's given us his Holy Spirit, and one day he is coming back, and I think that is going to be very soon. And so I'm glad that we can remember together the price that Jesus has paid with his body, with his blood. And so tonight, I hope you enjoy our candlelight service. And uh, Ken, you can go ahead and start that first video, sir, as we give you candles and carols. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious. The sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in glory sang as they welcomed his birth. 
forget Oh love in this story so tender Clearer than ever I see Stay, let me read what you whisper Will pay the ransom for me And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. If you would stand and help us sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And we're going to sing this a cappella, so uh, y'all better sing. <laughs> this ain't a solo. <laughs> Amen? All right, here we go. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the tells us so it was that while they were there the days were completed for her to be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them him in the inn. stand and sing with us again, O oh, Holy Night. <laughs> I tried to help us out there and leave out the real high parts as I was leaving the scene, but 
Y'all help me out. So, Amen. Thank you. Here we go with Luke verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out of the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. 
Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And if you would stand as they're lighting the host of angels candles and sing with us as we sing heart, the herald angel sings and y'all make some noise on this one. This is the joyous part. The Christ child has been born. Here we go with heart the herald. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Enjoy this song. Son and Father. 
Hallelujah. He is born. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I want you to reflect on this scene and on this event and on this Christmas miracle as Ken starts up the next video. And you may want to give us a little volume on this one, Ken. But uh, I want you, in your mind, as you listen and enjoy this video and hear a Christmas hallelujah, uh, just reflect on what may have been going through the minds of the wise men and of the mother and of the father of the Christ child who has come into the world.
being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. And the shepherds went back to tending their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. And the angels, the angels returned to heaven, singing praises to God on high. And many years later, Mary and Joseph, being mere humans, came to the end of their earthly lives. But the light that began in Bethlehem was life. Amen. And this life was the light of all humanity. This light still shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we experienced His glory, the glory that could only belong to the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the message that we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. And it all began on an otherwise silent night. So if you would gather with us up and down the highway, we're going to light our light off of the light of the world. And we're going to pass that light from one to another as we end our service by singing Silent Night. As we pass the light that is the light of all mankind, and I love it because John says, This we have heard from him. Go ahead, my your baby. This we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And as we illuminate this room with the light that June's going to pass, hopefully. <laughs> Who puts a six year old in charge of passing the light? Help us, Jesus. Thank you, June. Thank you. As we pass the light, y'all join us as we sing. Silent night, holy night, and conclude our candlelight service. Silent night, holy night. Extinguish your candle and uh, we'll have a box that maybe you picked them up in. 
to place your burnt candles in as you leave. We wish you a Merry Christmas from our family here at Horseshoe First Baptist, your family. Uh, I hope you have a great Christmas Eve, a wonderful Christmas day as we celebrate the birth of the Savior that has come, Jesus. You are dismissed.